So I will ask you, Florian, if you can join us uh, here and to present us a little bit what's happening in the in the InsurTech insurance API space, right? Hello, Florian. How are you? Hi, I'm fine. And you? I'm re doing really well uh, too. I invite you to share your screen, and so you you can actually. Uh, 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 share uh, the story about like the state of uh, insurance APIs. Yeah, the state of insure tech and APIs. Yeah, let's go for it. I, I would advise you to, yeah, to go full screen. Yes, that's perfect. We well, the slides are perfect. Uh, yeah, I leave you for 25 minutes. Okay, cool. So hi, everybody. Really happy to be with you uh, today. And maybe to introduce, let's say very briefly, uh, that topic, so how to leverage API in insurance uh, with, let's say, an overview of what has already been done on the market and what might be uh, next. Uh, so very quickly on my side, so I'm running Astoria VC, which is the first pure uh, insure tech investor in Europe. We are investing in insurance at seed stage, so very early and across Europe. So that's based on these uh, three topics that I'm sharing uh, today what I saw on the market around API in insurance. So basically, I will just uh, come back very briefly on what's uh, InsureTech uh, for those of you that are not very familiar with that topic, so with a few figures so that everybody knows what we are talking about. Um, then I'd like to focus on the major trend uh, so far, um, which is around insurance distribution. And obviously, in the last part, I'd like to share a few ideas on what might happen next based on my own conviction, happy to be challenged there, or on what we are seeing uh, at seed stage across Europe. So the first point, InsurTech. So very briefly, InsurTech. Uh, quite obviously, it's the combination of insurance and technology, but beyond the joke, uh, I really wanted to uh, highlight this uh, tech part of uh, insure tech, um, especially as we will talk about uh, API, so obviously the tech layer. Um, but maybe to, to give you an overview of what insure tech covers, I would say there are three uh, areas. So the first one, which might be defined as the core of InsureTech is enterprise software. So any kind of technology useful for uh, incumbents and corporates. Then uh, you have uh, every technology that has a direct or indirect impact on existing business lines. So mainly there are uh, three of them, which are FinTech for life insurance, digital health for health insurance. And then you have what we call in insurance uh, PNC, which uh, combines mobility, and home uh, insurance as well. Um, and then um, I think it's an area that will be especially attractive for API-based um, players. It's everything around new risks where, let's say, corporates have limited uh, track record and historical data, and uh, which are, let's say, either new risks or a surging risk like cybersecurity, weather insurance, pandemic, unfortunately, uh, everything around industry and so on. So basically, that's what I have in mind when I talk about uh, insure tech. And maybe to give you some figures about the size of the market and what we are uh, talking about. So basically, as you can see on that chart, th th that's the... Um, worldwide investment in insure tech startups. So as you can see, they have been growing quite fast over the, the last uh, years. Um, and over the first half of this year, it was uh, around $2.5 billion uh, that were invested in uh, insure tech startup, again, worldwide, um, which is a bit less than half of previous year. So let's see by the end of this year, what's the real impact of the current crisis. But anyway, there are more and more startups. Uh, there are more and more uh, growing startups that are attracting bigger uh, rounds. That's what you can see on that chart. But again, six billion, let's say, of investment per year. That's the figure you should uh, have in mind. Then, um, and I think that this is one trend to have in mind to better understand why uh, we are talking about API in insurance, is that um, insurance company, let's say, are, uh, so first they have an internal need to digitize themselves. So that's the first point. And the second point is, let's say the competition, um, which is fighting uh, with them outside sometime of the, of the market. So here I try to gather around again, three, uh, let's say usual business line, health, car and home. 
um, a few competitors. So obviously, on the first line, you have insure tech players. So these are uh, startups that are competing directly with them. Um, and insurance companies have been looking at this insure tech scene for years. But what I, I wanted to, to show you as well is that there are external players that are neither insurance player nor insure tech startups, but that are platform that might be relevant into the next insurance generation. And if you look at um, the, the, the green check, you can see that, for instance, in car, Tesla or Blablacar are already selling insurance. Um, on a home, Sologé, which is a French uh, website for, for, to find a, a flat, is already selling um, home insurance. And if we go a bit uh, farther, uh, we can assume that in health, Apple with the Apple Watch or Fitbit with, uh, with its uh, wearables might be relevant into distributing health insurance. So that's a few ideas showing that even external players are entering the insurance market, meaning that they are eating part of the value chain. And the consequence uh, is that API insurance, um, I would say, uh, have been a, a growing topic. And we went, let's say, through a few phases. So if I come back, let's say, around 2015, almost nobody knows what was API um, about. Then uh, we had the uh, PSD2 uh, regulation in uh, financial services and in the banking space. So here, banks obviously had to deal with the API. But obviously, insurance started to learn a bit more about what are API. And being afraid of having exactly the same regulation in insurance, they started uh, considering that they, they, they would need API. And now, let's say, um, we see more and more examples. So I put two of them, Wacam, uh, which uh, was previously La Parisienne, and Baloise, a, a Swiss-based um, insurance player. They are well advanced in terms of leveraging API for their own distribution. Um, and beyond those two big names, uh, we see more and more internal teams that are set up around launching API-based product projects. So I would say that we are very close to the phase where things happen for real. So now I will uh, deep dive on um, what is the major uh, trend that we see around API in insurance, which is around distribution. So here, just maybe to, to be very uh, um, smooth on how we define the value chain, I would say there are the three um, colored uh, parts, price and product, distribution, claim. As you can see uh, here, uh, almost half of investment in insure tech startup were done on distribution. So that's why I think um, uh, distribution is the first use case of API, because for years, uh, a distribution has been the, the hottest topic for insure tech themselves. So that's, th that's the, the first point. The second point, which I try to uh, explain here, is why the platform like the one I mentioned before, are relevant to distribute insurance uh, products. And the truth is that first they have many customers, obviously on their vertical. Uh, so a car sharing platform will be relevant around car insurance. Uh, a um, um, health wearable will be relevant around healthcare. Um, I, I would say, uh, uh, a startup uh, doing with uh, cyber secur security will be relevant on uh, cyber insurance. So if you take this kind of platform, usually they have millions of customers, which could compete with uh, even the biggest corporate existing customer bases. So many customer is the first reason why platform might be um, uh, relevant in insurance distribution. The second point, um, which is quite challenging, I would say, for insurers, is that this platform have um, a deep understanding of, of their customer because they have a lot of data. Um, and we tend to think that uh, insurance is all about data. But here, if you take a car sharing platform, then you know exactly when your customer are taking the car, where they are coming uh, to, uh, how they drive, how they behave. Uh, so you have many data that could help you better assess the level of risk of your customer. And the last point, which is, I would say, the dream of any insurance company, is that they have regular touch points. Um, again, the, for the car sharing platform, you come back to that, that platform every time you need to, um, to rent a car. Uh, for the wearables, 
maybe on a daily basis, you track your sleep, you track how many steps you've done, and you engage, let's say, at least very often with uh, the, the platform. So here, all those touch, touch points are, let's say, opportunities to push products to customers that trust your company. So now API, so here I would say nothing new uh, for, uh, for you, I assume, but, uh, but anyway, um, uh, this is the way I usually explain how API works for insurance companies. So on the right, you have all the products that could be connected. And on the left, uh, you have all the platform that might be relevant uh, to distribute this product. Again, one platform is relevant for one vertical usually. So here, get around and blah, 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 car might be relevant for car insurance. Fitbit or WeThings might be relevant for health insurance. Rightmove, Zoopla or Gumtree might be relevant for home insurance, maybe pet insurance, um, and sometimes, let's say, bike insurance as well, if you have one at home. So basically, that's the way you should consider API in insurance, distributing this kind of product through platform on a very specific vertical. That's what we've been seeing on the ground. And that's why, uh, that's what I think uh, will uh, surge in the, coming, uh, in the coming months. So here, I just wanted to give you some example of startup that are enabling the previous slide. So meaning uh, distributing insurance products through, through platforms to show again that beyond the theory, it already happens, it's already available, and there are players that could help you make it happen for, for real. Either you are a platform who want, let's say, to distribute insurance product to your customers, or if you are an insurance company that would like, let's say, to distribute its product through new distribution channels. So the, first, the four examples I put it there are around API. So that's what they have in common, let's say, uh, which is obvious related to the, uh, the, the topic we are discussing today. But all of them, let's say, have a different go-to market and are enabling, let's say, different type of customers uh, to make it happen around insurance and API. The first one, Cover, let's say, allows uh, the gig economy. So let's say Uber, Deliveroo, these kind of players distribute insurance product to their, not final users, but let's say their gig, uh, gig um, employees, even if that's not the proper words, but for Uber, it could be to the drivers. For Deliveroo, it will be for the, the riders. So anyway, at the end of the day, it enabled insurance distribution to this kind of new workers on gig platforms. Then you have Casco. Casco, it's the other way around, meaning that they are enabling insurance company to distribute their uh, product on any kind of platform. So that's much more an enabler for, for corporates. Then you have uh, WeCover. Uh, I think that they will uh, uh, tell a bit more about themselves later on in the afternoon. And disclaimer here, we have invested in that company. Um, so WeCover, they are enabling, let's say, e-commerce. So if you are, let's say, um, a, a website selling, I don't know, smartphone, then obviously in the customer journey, you can embed relevant uh, smartphone insurance uh, products. It could be the same, uh, and I know that they have already a, a product live around young drivers. So if you have an online uh, driving school, then again, in the customer journey, you can embed insurance. And the last example I, I wanted to share with you is around bank insurance, uh, which is a strong topic, especially in France, but growing um, uh, in Europe more generally, because uh, beyond life insurance, it's a growing channel uh, to distribute insurance product. So it's Azure based in the UK, operating in UK and Germany. Um, they are enabling banks distribute insurance products through their mobile apps. So again, exactly the same concept, one platform, the banks, um, that would like, let's say, to embed insurance product and relevant insurance product into their customer journey. So here is the first example, again, live of this kind of platform distributing insurance product. Again, the idea here is to show you that it works already. There are already uh, examples um, on the market and they are generating uh, relevant and significant figures. Uh, I cannot uh, disclose uh, the one uh, for, for BlaBlaCar, but they, they are uh, doing significant revenues with this business stream. 
which what is interesting is that if you take the value chain again, uh, and if you take, let's say, the track record of the partnership between BlaBlaCar and AXA, you realize that BlaBlaCar is eating more and more of the value chain. So it started as lead generation for AXA at the very beginning. Then they became an insurance broker and are selling a product which name is BlaBlaSure. No mention to AXA. And what we might expect next, that's our own conviction, is that maybe later on they will they will or they might be interested in developing products that are highly relevant to their customer segment. So I think that it might be the next step. And obviously, at each step of their journey, they are eating more and more of the value chain. So that's the risk corporates are facing um, with this kind of relationship is that partnering with a platform is great, but if you if you'd like to be um, let's say connected to this platform, you need to have API um, available and you you might uh, be ready not to display your brand, meaning doing white label. So that's beyond the tech challenge around API. I think that there is a cultural challenge, which is, okay, I agree to do white label. I agree to have my brand disappear uh, beyond the platform's name. The second example is around teleconsultation. So here are figures in France. Um, quite interestingly, uh, I think it was in September 2018, uh, teleconsultation became reimbursed by the public uh, healthcare system. And over the first year of this uh, mechanism, two thirds of the teleconsultations processed in France were done by only one platform, Doctolib, which was initially a platform to connect patients and doctor and to schedule meetings, meaning that they, 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 were, they are the perfect example of a platform. They had millions of customers, patients. They had the other side of the platform, meaning doctors. They were matching patient needs with doctor availability. That was their core platform. On top of that, they added um, a feature which was, which was teleconsultation. And then, bam, they took two thirds of the market. That's huge. So that's a good example of how to leverage an existing platform to take the market or to take the lead on the market here teleconsultation. But we can imagine that tomorrow morning they might embed, let's say, uh, health insurance in this kind of, um, of platform. Again, that's our views. And the third example, young drivers here or Nika, I think that they claim to have um, a third of any uh, young drivers coming to their platform every year. So that's huge. If you are looking for teenagers, they are there on Ornicar. That's the biggest teenager platform. Um, and as part of their last uh, fundraising, uh, fundraising round, they announced that they wanted to launch a dedicated insurance product. So again, here, perfect example, a platform trying to make money and revenues and margin thanks to insurance. And I would say that if we um, have, let's say, um, a further look at uh, API, I think it enabled uh, corporate distribution because if you take all these examples that I mentioned previously, you can see that API distribution through platform should be a way for corporates to make it happen or to, to, ma to, to make live what the uh, famous, uh, the famous uh, book, uh, The Innovator Dilemma, suggests to any corporate. If you'd like to innovate, you need to, to uh, launch a, a dedicated team outside of your core business. And then you have two options, either launch new products on existing customers. So it's a way, let's say, to do, I mentioned new risk, cyber insurance, weather insurance, pandemic, industry, etc. So how to uh, yeah, make happen new risk where the market might be small at the beginning at an effective operation cost thanks to API. And then the second option is new customer segment on existing products. So here the idea is how to leverage technology to broader, uh, to broaden the, the customer the customer base. So I think that API is the best example. Um, if you haven't read that book, uh, it was written 25 years ago, but still very relevant. I couldn't um, advise you more than uh, reading this uh, this book. It's very uh, insightful. 
now very uh, very short overview of what might be next just to conclude the, that uh, discussion before taking a few uh, questions from the audience and um, so here if we take uh, again the, the the value chain i mentioned a lot distribution but actually things are happening on price and product as well and starting to happen as well on claim management so on price and product it's all around data i will go through very quickly to that slide but basically i mentioned insurance is all about data the truth is that insurance company have only declarative data whereas platforms have on their vertical everything data so there is a challenge here and then api might be a way for insurance company either to collect to to, to connect to new data sets to collect themselves new data uh, the, to enable let's say address new risks or api could be a way to connect to external players that have access to these new data sets and that are able to leverage these to, to, for, to for knowledge purposes the second example is around claim management so here a uh, good example i think uh, it's monk monk is a uh, video ai uh, company basically if you have a car accident you just film your car and then um, it enables you know the level of damage and then how much it might cost to repair your your car Quite interestingly, they have partnered directly with GetAround, which is a, a car sharing platform, and there is no claim, claim manager anymore in the process. So here, perfect example of how external player, GetAround has nothing to do with insurance, could connect directly to technology, here, computer vision, uh, to, um, let's say, push out of the game um, a, a player, the claim, uh, the claim manager, and I think, and I expect more and more of these cases to happen in the in the near future. So happy to answer any question you might uh, have either now if we have a, a few minutes or later on uh, today or on social network later on. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Florian, for this great overview. And, and we have some questions actually. Uh, first one, so we have three minutes, but we'll try to address them all. So Jens is asking you, how are big players like Allianz covering and emphasize API? Are, as they, oh, sorry, are they as arrogant as automotive industry was versus Tesla? To your mind. Yeah, I, I will not be specific on Allianz, but I will have a, a general overview. Okay. Uh, I think that most of corporates so far try to address API internally through the IT teams. But you know better than I do that IT teams have, let's say, a three years roadmap. Uh, whereas we, when we talk about API, we are discussing a few months development. Um, if a platform come to you tomorrow morning asking for a product, asking for an API connection, they need it in the next weeks, in the next months, not in three years from now. So I think that after trying, let's say, to do it internally through the IT teams, they realize that API, API needs from them a bit more of agility and more and more we see insurance player even big one um, launching dedicated teams that not necessarily are displaying the, the name of the big corporates they might have let's say a startup name and they are moving way faster so that's the first point and the second point which is let's say related to the current situation is that after the lockdown and during the lockdown they realized uh, insurance company um, that uh, distributing online was not a must have anymore. They should have a way to work even in a closed world. So I think it, it, th that's a, a change in their, in their mindset. And now they are, let's say, considering um, online distribution as the real opportunity. And if, but at the end of the day, if you just take the e-commerce uh, figures, e-commerce is around, let's say 20% of all the retail market i think that this is the figure we should all have in mind when we talk about api when we talk about distributions through platform or online what we are talking about is 10 20 percent of the insurance market so obviously in terms of percentage still limited but as the insurance market in europe is in trillion euros 10 or 20 percent of that is huge and if uh, you reduce the turnover of a big player, let's say by 10 or 20 percent, this might have a dramatic impact on their uh, financial results. So that's significant. 
Yeah, question from Simon in one minute. Uh, do you believe that incumbents like AXA and others, right, are most likely to be disintermediated by more nimble and flexible independent insurance as a service platforms? Yeah, I, I definitely think that first, the big names will be there anyway, because they are big, they have a brand, they have a balance sheet, they have a capacity to price the risk. Um, I think that API opportunity is much more an opportunity, let's say for tier two, tier three player to gain market share and to make sure that they will be part of the next insurance generation. Uh, because if you take AXA, for instance, AXA France is doing a lot of partnership. They are not leveraging API uh, so far. Uh, the Bla BlaBlaCar partnership between BlaBlaCar and AXA is going through direct assurance. There is no API involved. So they manage to, 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 to make it live anyway because they are AXA. So again, for big names, I think that API is an opportunity, an additional opportunity for tier two, tier three players. It's much more make sure that they will be a uh, part of the next insurance generation and they will not be um, made redundant. It seems that APIs are reducing the cost of having a partnership and integration and also uh, reducing the cost for a bigger reach. So yeah, uh, for tier tier two, tier three players, I totally agree. Really, a few seconds for the last question. Uh, are APIs in insurance, uh, APIs uh, only uh, useful for B2C or do you, will you see a broader application to the whole industry? No, no, I think that uh, what I mentioned around price and products, uh, I think that here it's much more B2B. Um, so an insurance company connected to uh, uh, an insurance uh, player, but if the discussion is around what we call commercial lines for SMEs, for instance, I, I, I definitely think that there is something to do around API. If you take a bank, uh, for instance, bank for SMEs, they are highly relevant to distribute uh, insurance products for, for SMEs. So, so I think it's both for, let's say, personal lines, us, around health, around car, around home, but it's highly relevant for corporates as well, for SMEs as well, especially around new risks. Yeah, thank you very much, Florian. Thank you. We're a little Thanks bit a over time. It was insightful with uh, some interesting questions. Uh, if people want to know more about Astoria uh, and what you do, uh, either from an uh, incumbent insurer or the insert tech uh, company, you can go on their website, astoria.vc. And uh, Florian, if you see any relevant link, you can add them in the chat of the stage uh, right on the right of your screen. Thank you very much, Thanks, Florian, for this presentation. Thanks.